Hi, this is Miss Wright, and this is part two of my um, review of the prologue for Act One of Romeo and Juliet. For this um, section, I am only going to be going over the technical parts of looking at Shakespeare's work, and you should try to apply uh, this uh, close reading and analysis to other parts of the play as we read them. So we have the prologue uh, and we discussed uh, the rhyme scheme, the A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, G, and we know that um, it's an alternating rhyme scheme which means that not every two lines rhyme but every other line rhymes. In other speeches later on in the play, Shakespeare will have rhyming couplets, but here he has an alternating rhyme scheme. And there are four quatrains, which means these four lines work together, and then these four lines work together, the next four lines work together, and it ends with a heroic couplet, which is the last two lines that work together. Okay? I put on the side here um, different terms that I'm referring to so that you can actually kind of review them as I'm going along. Um, when it talks about um, a foot, a foot is um, a unit of sound or combination of sounds. So every two syllables in this uh, sonnet is a foot. So two household, both alike in dignity, that has five feet. This is the short sound, and this is the heavy sound. Short, heavy, short, heavy, short, heavy, short, heavy. And those five combinations make up five feet, which gives us penta. Penta means five, right? And the meter meaning sound or pattern. So there are five feet to each line, ten syllables per line. Each, every two syllables is a foot. Okay, and we'll talk more about that as the um, play progresses. I didn't want to do too much at the beginning. And rhyme scheme I've already talked about. The next thing that I wanted to point out were the literary terms, because as you're doing your analysis, you want to pay attention to the literary terms. So here I identified symbols, because the households really symbolize the two families. Um, here I have setting. We find out where the play takes place. Conflict, because we have the grudge. Uh, between the two families, obviously, that's we find out the conflict. Imagery with the blood on the hands, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. Here we have alliteration, which is the repetition of consonant sounds at the beginning of words. So we have from, forth, fatal, and foes. Here we have foreshadowing, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life. It gives us a hint about what's going to happen later on in the play. This one, I'm still debating, I think this is a pun, where it says, doth with their death bury their parents' strife. I think some people would consider that a pun, because Shakespeare could have used a different word or different terms, but he he's talking about the fact that the young people are going to die, and that the only thing that will end their parents' strife is the death of their children, and he makes sure he chooses the word bury, and bury means put an end to, obviously, but bury also means to put someone under the earth, and that's what's going to happen later on. Uh, this line talks about the conflict with the continuance of their parents' rage. Is now the two-hour traffic of our stage. When we talk about the traffic of the stage, we're talking about 
acting. So this whole idea of traffic, which we think of cars and honking horns, that's not what it means here. This means the activity of the stage, which is acting. And so it's a metaphor. It's a metaphor for what happens on the stage. And the last literary term that I found was um, alliteration again with shall, shall, and strive. With more alliteration. I would love it if anybody finds something that I missed. Let me know. And then I have Romeo and Juliet's syntactical devices. And I didn't find that many in the sonnet. It's just 14 lines, so I don't think there could be a whole bunch. But if you find something that I didn't see, please let me know. So I found um, antithesis with from ancient grudge break to new mutiny where you have the old idea juxtaposed with the new so ancient grudge the opposite new mutiny antithesis um, i found epanalypsis which is the repetition of words with um, words in between and i have civil and civil and I found it again at the end where it has shall and shall. Okay, so I hope this helps you use this as an example to go through, um, to refer to as you go through your own passages and you do your annotation uh, as you read the play. Okay, and also keep referring back to your uh, literary term sheets and your syntactical devices. Thanks.